Do you know the consequences of a weak or non-existent prayer life? Today, we're talking about it on Morning Maids. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be here on Morning Meds. This is our first official episode of Morning Meds where we are doing visual as well as audio. 63% of Christians in the U.S. consider prayer to be an essential part of their Christian identity. Now, how important do you consider prayer to be in your Christian life, right? How important is it to you? And that's what we're going to talk about today. What happens when we don't pray? And to decide what happens when we don't pray, we're going to use scripture to tell us what happens when we do pray consistently. And when we do pray in faith, what happens? So we know what happens in the opposite, right? All right. So we're going to use James chapter five, verses 13 through 18 to do that. I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to have a word of prayer and then we're going to jump right into the information. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you humbly asking you to hear our prayer. And we ask you, Lord, to receive our worship in this moment, God. We acknowledge who you are. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge your sovereignty. And we ask you, God, to just allow us down into the treasures of your word. We know that we are not worthy as we are. So we thank you for our for your son, Jesus who died and whose blood covers us, Lord. We ask you, God, to allow us to understand your word and to perceive because we know that it is you, God, that gives us the power to understand and the power to understand the power to perceive. So we ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to allow us to learn more about your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So James is talking to someone else, right? He's talking to a specific a set of people. He's not necessarily speaking to us. So we have to understand and ask God to allow us to see what we get when we pray. Now, so we have healing, forgiveness, and change, right? Also, prayer solidifies the relationships between God and between man and man, right? So the relationship between God and man and the relationship between man and man. Because according to um, verse 16, it says confess your faults one to another. So that means that I would have to open myself up to you and trust you, right, to pray for me earnestly. So that would solidify our relationship. That would make us closer. That would even make us uh, what some people would refer to as a small group. Right, where you had that person where you could confide in them and you know that they're praying earnestly for you. That solidifies the relationship between man and man. And it also solidifies the relationship between God and man because you're conversing with him. You're still going back to him and giving him credit for the power that he possesses for what he has. His goodness, his greatness is all about him. Okay. Now, the last thing that happens when we pray is it reiterates our faith in God's power. You will see the word faith mentioned throughout these several verses multiple times because it is the necessary thing. If you didn't have faith, why would you even be praying, right? 
So now that we talked about what happens when we do pray, we need to talk about what happens when we don't pray as a result of what we learned from James chapter five. Now, this is what I received, okay? The number one thing that happens when we do not pray is disconnection, right? It is going to be the opposite of solidifying that relationship. You're going to be disconnected from the Father through the Holy Spirit because you'll be desensitized through to, to hearing his voice. You won't even really know, right? The Lord's, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, right? If you don't pray to him often and you don't know what his voice sounds like, that means you won't have that that assurance that you're on the right path until you're halfway down it. And then it's like the rug gets, you know, snatched from under you and you don't know any better. So that's the reason why prayer is necessary before we act, right? So if we don't pray, that means we're disconnected from the Father through the Holy Spirit, right? The next thing that happens when we don't pray is manifestation, right? So everybody understands that manifestation is a real thing. It's going to happen. What is done in the dark is revealed. What you, what a, a man ingests, it comes out. So what happens when you don't pray is you only can project and manifest your own selfish desires. So the only thing you can think of as just a regular person is, oh, I need a car. Oh, I need a man. Oh, I need some money. Oh, I need some flowers. All you can think about is that frivolous stuff. But when you're praying to God in faith, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to pray. So you're not just empty asking, but you're asking for the fruits of his spirit, for the for your life to manifest his fruit, for your life to manifest his, um, for, you know, for you to show him to the world and not your desires and what you want and your good looks and your good stuff, you know, your brands or whatever. Our life as Christians, as Christians, let's be clear. If you're not a Christian, you think it doesn't matter truly anyway, you know, cause you have your own idea. But if you identify as Christians, this is our goal is to please God and to live our purpose out that he has for us. You let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not once did it say, Lord, Lord, give me a million dollars. You know, like it's, it did not say that. It said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which means we're trying to do what you need. Okay. Now, that's what I have about manifestation for right now. So we have disconnection and manifestation. The very last thing, and then we'll move on to how we can apply these things to our lives, is susceptibility. When you do not pray, you become susceptibility to the deception of the enemy. It's so easy. And I'm telling you, the word says every good and perfect gift comes from above, which means there's going to be some things that are shown to you, shown to you, that look really, really good. But once you start tasting a bite and you start getting a piece of it, you realize it ain't perfect for you. It's no good. It's a horrible mess. And Lord, God forbid that a baby comes out of it or a, some type of reason why you have to be connected to this person for forever. There are things put in place to protect us from those little baby things that the enemy tries to put in front of us. So when we do not pray we have no protection. We have no protection as it pertains to God's will for our lives. We're easily deceived, easily misled. Um, everything sounds great, right? Somebody says, name it and claim it. You say, hmm, I want to do that. Somebody says, girl, if you just think real positively and think real hard and, and, and you want it that bad, you'll get it. And you say, well, yes, that sounds effective for me. And it probably will be effective, but what they don't tell you is the trick behind it because the power that be, that is behind the purpose is what matters. It is not what you get that matters. It's the power behind it. So you sit there and you manifest this money or you manifest whatever you thinking that you want, and then it comes with strings attached. And that's not how God works. So that's why God says every good and perfect gift comes from above because there are going to be some things that look really good. Manifestation, um, naming and claiming, witchcraft, all of these things that we can take time into learning and growing and having faith in, those things are real, but they come with strings. 
Okay, so we'll talk about that in another video. Lord help. Okay, now we have disconnection, manifestation, and susceptibility. Those are the three things that happen when you do not pray. So based on what we learned today, how can we apply? What can you do if you find that you are guilty of not praying enough? The first thing I would say is prioritize prayer. I actually have... Um, connected to my morning alarm, I have pray in huge, as big as it could get to flash across my screen as my alarm goes off because that's my initial, okay, I need to talk to God. And I know some people may be like, mm, that just can't. but hey, that's my initial, let's talk, you know, let's talk because that's the quietest time usually. It's the slowest time. Um, it's the darkest time usually and you can get you can hear from him at that time. So even if it's down in the middle of the day, maybe it's a lunch reminder. Maybe you just have it strategically randomly placed throughout your day. You have a sticky note at your office. Prioritize prayer and make it uh, visible in your life. Do not be ashamed of your process to grow in your relationship with Christ. Write it down. Pray. Don't forget to pray. Did you pray today? Remind yourself of prayer. Okay? All right, and on the screen, you will now see our Bible study questions that go along with this lesson. Feel free to write those down. They will also be um, in the description box. We pray that God's will be done and we pray that he is pleased and that our coming and our doing is not in vain. And if you will, I will pray and then I'll let y'all go. So here we go. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We ask you, God, to allow us the opportunity to keep going and be strengthened. We ask you, Lord, to protect us and cover us from the attacks of the enemy. We ask you, God, to allow us the strength that we need to communicate with you more and know more what you want for our lives and not necessarily what we want for our lives, but what you want. Because that's the best way. That's the peaceful way. And we want that way, God. So we love you, Lord. Keep us forever in your care. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice who is watching this video at any moment in time. We love you, God. We bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.